Hey everyone, in today's episode we're going to dive deeper into working with iterators in Golang. In the latest version of Go, 1.23, ITER package is added that helps us work with user-defined iterators. A while ago, we shared an episode on the generator pattern using channels and goroutines to generate prime numbers. Today, we will refactor that code to use the iterator pattern instead. Let's get started. First, let's quickly review the generator pattern version of the code we had before. Here's what it looks like. This version uses a generator function that continuously produces the next prime number and sends it through this channel. Here, we pass a done channel to stop the generator. In the main function, we define the done channel. This loop receives the primes and prints them. Once we reach the tenth prime, we break the loop and then send a done signal to stop the generator. The key idea here is that the channel is the mechanism used to stream data, and the done signal helps us stop it gracefully. But this approach comes with a bit of complexity. Using channels, handling the done signal, and making sure everything works concurrently. While channels and go routines are powerful, they add some overhead. Now let's move to a cleaner, more structured approach using iterators. First, we define the function. It returns an iter.sec of type integer. This is a sequence of integers. This type supports lazy evaluation, meaning it computes values only when they are needed, rather than up front. Here, we initialize a variable num with the value 1. This will keep track of the current number we're testing for primality. Next, we define an inner function CQ, which takes a yield function as its argument. The yield function will allow us to return prime numbers one by one. It also returns a boolean to control the flow of the loop. We start an infinite for loop. This loop will continuously look for the next prime number. Here, we call a next prime function, which takes the current number num and finds the next prime number greater than it. This new prime number is then assigned back to num. Now we yield the current prime number by passing num to the yield function. If yield returns false, it indicates that no further primes are needed, and we break out of the loop. Finally, we return the sec function itself, which is now ready to generate prime numbers lazily whenever we iterate over it. Now we have our new generator function. Let's remove the old implementation. We don't need this channel anymore. The function prime generator does not require any arguments. No need to signal the done channel. Here, we have our new implementation of prime number generator. Let's try this out. It generates 10 prime numbers. Next, we will look at a few ways the ITER package can be used. We will begin with this structure order. This struct represents an order in a food delivery system. It includes the order ID, the customer name, the amount of the order, and its status, which can be pending, delivered, or cancelled. We will define a generic filter function similar to one Python has. This function will be used to apply filters on orders. Next, we implement a helper function, display. This function will be responsible for printing out the orders from an iterator. In the main function, we have created a slice of sample orders. Each order struct contains details like the order ID, customer name, amount, and status. Here, we are going to use iterators to do a few things. Use the filter function to find orders where the amount is greater than $50. Next, we filter orders with the status of delivered. Then explore the collect function. Use the sorted func method from slices to apply custom sorting to the orders. Finally, we will use the chunk function to divide the orders into chunks of three. Now let's implement the filter function. 
This is the heart of our code that processes data lazily. The filter function is generic, meaning it can work with any type of data. The type is denoted by V. It returns an iter.sec of type integer. This function takes an iterator. The second argument is a keep function, which decides if a value should be passed on. Now we define an inner function sec, which takes a yield function as its argument. The yield function will allow us to return filtered elements one by one. Inside, it loops over each value v in the sequence. Then we check if the keep function returns true. If so, the value is yielded forward. If yield returns false, we break. Finally, we return the sec function. The display function helps us print the filtered orders. Let's paste the implementation here. It accepts an iterator of type order. This function loops through each order and prints out its details. Now we will use filter and display functions to filter orders based on some conditions. We use the filter function to get orders where the amount is greater than $50. Here we pass the orders to slices.values to get an iterator over the slice of orders. The filtering logic is provided by this function. This function checks if order amount is more than 50. The filter function returns an iter sequence. Let's receive it in a variable. Let's display the filtered orders using the display function. Similarly, we filter orders where the status is delivered. The process is similar to the previous filter, and we use display to print the filtered list. Now let's explore the collect function from the slices package. We will try to collect the orders that have amount less than 50. This kind of condition can be applied to any attribute of the order. We will define a sequence that collects orders with an amount less than $50. This function takes another function as a parameter, yield, which itself is a function that accepts an order and returns a boolean. The yield function is used to control the flow of data during iteration. Specifically, it will allow us to pass values back to the caller of the sec function. Next, we loop over the orders slice using a for loop. The variable o represents each individual order object in the orders slice. This is where we'll check each order one by one. Inside the loop, we check if the amount field of the current order is less than 50. This acts as our filter condition. We only care about orders where the amount is less than $50, so this check ensures we only process those. If the order meets the condition, we then call the yield function, passing it the current order. The yield function will process this order and return a Boolean value. If yield returns false, that means we should stop the iteration, and the return statement exits the sec function early. Finally, we call the slices, Collect function, passing it the sec function we just defined. Slices.collect runs the sec function and gathers all the orders that were yielded. Let's store these orders in the filtered orders slice. Now we will display the collected orders. Next, we sort the orders by amount in descending order using sorted funks. 
slices.sortedFunk function sorts the orders based on the comparison function we provide. The first argument is the iterator. We again use slices.values to convert orders into an iterator. The next argument is the comparison function. Let's define a comparison function. This function accepts two order objects, A and B. It returns an integer value, which will be used to determine the sorting order. We use the cmp.compare function from the cmp package. This function compares two values and returns, a negative number if the first value is smaller, zero if they're equal, and a positive number if the first value is larger. We compare B amount with A amount. Notice that we compare B first and a second. This is done to sort the orders in descending order by their amount. Now, let's put this function in the sorted function. I made a mistake here, this should be sorted function. It returns a slice of orders. Let's display the sorted orders on the console. Now we will use the slices.chunk function to break down the orders into smaller slices of three elements at a time. This approach is really useful when you need to process or display large datasets in smaller, manageable parts. Chunk function returns an iterator, so we can use range on it. We use a for loop to iterate over the chunks of orders. We call the slices chunk function, passing in two arguments. Orders, the slice of orders we want to split into chunks. The size of each chunk, meaning we want each chunk to contain three order elements. Inside the loop, we print each chunk. Our program is ready. Let's see it running. Here, it filters orders that have amount greater than 50. This is the list of delivered orders. These are the collected orders using collect function. Sorted orders by amount in descending order are here. Finally, the chunks are displayed here. The first chunk is of size 3. The second one is of 2 as only two orders are left. And there you have it. We've filtered, sorted and chunked our data in a really efficient way using lazy evaluation with the ITA package. This approach allows us to process data on the fly without loading everything into memory. Hope this helped you understand how to work with sequences in Go. Like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more Go tutorials. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.